to prepare ourselves while we are seeing around the world in the very eyes, in our very eyes, what is going on. And the signs are telling us that Jesus is coming soon and that our redemption is drawing nigh. So I pray that all of us will be benefited with this study tonight. That um, it's time, it's high time for us because Jesus, uh, the Bible is telling us in Romans chapter 7, I'm sorry, chapter 13, that the time is at hand. It's high time for us to wake up, to wake up in our spiritual life, in our dealings with God as he commissioned us to finish his work. So we're going to talk about Daniel chapter 5. We will open our Bibles. So this time, I uh, just want to let everyone know that Daniel chapter 5 is a preview of the end time events. We think this coronavirus is just there, but this is part of it. Now, Daniel chapter 5 is the preview of the time, um, end time event, which is the fall of spiritual Babylon. Now you will see it in Revelation chapter 14 and chapter 18, and the calling to come out over my people. And most of the time we have been taught the coming out of people is coming out of other religion and moving or transferring to another religion tonight. We will see the cause of the fall of Babylon to give us instruction, warning, and enlightenment so that we will not be deceived by the enemy. When you will notice about the drinking of the wine using the cup of God, the, the filling of the, the vessel of God with the wine represents the end time attempt to force God's people into accepting the Babylon's fall doctrine or the church's fall doctrine, which is the wine of Babylon. Wine represents false doctrine. We study in Daniel chapter 3 about the force, the, the, the time will come that the world, the government, will force people to worship the wrong God. And in chapter 6 of Daniel, the world will force people not to worship the true God. So in between, the force, the um, force that they're going to have in chapter 3 and chapter 6, in between is chapter 4 and chapter 5. Yesterday we saw how God so loved the world through King Nebuchadnezzar that he was so patient to reach King Nebuchadnezzar even to the point that he has to give King Nebuchadnezzar seven years to take everything that is in himself, confidence in himself. So if you remember in Matthew chapter 24, last verses about the, the wicked servant, he said, oh, I will, my, my master will not come yet. So let me eat and drink. And then when he get drunk, he quarrel all his um, uh, people there in the house. And then the Lord, the master came, right? So he said, let's eat. We eat the bread, drinking wine. That means the false doctrine that, that becomes so drunk with it. And it says in heart, my Lord delayeth. You can check it out in Matthew chapter 24, verse 48. My Lord delayeth his coming. Oh, the Lord is not coming yet. And the people of God is always failing as to what God instructed to them. From the time of Moses to the New Testament, it's always like that. So, brothers and sisters, for us, it's high time for us from general conference up to this time. A lot of people doing this. A Bible study, different topics, but one longing to bring the goodness of God and establish the people in their faith to be strong in the faith because the end time, the end is just around the corner. So this guy, this evil servant, was caught in an hour when his master came at the time when he was not ready. So brothers and sisters, this Daniel chapter 5 is very timely. Can you imagine? 150 years 
before Daniel, God, through the prophet Isaiah, prophesied already about the manner of Babylon's overthrow or the falling of Babylon. Even the name who will capture. Let's open our Bible. Anybody can open your Bibles in Isaiah chapter 44, verse um, 27. And then we're going to go to chapter 45, verse 1. It's just close. Anybody? Isaiah 44. Yeah, start from verse 27 up to 45, verse 1. Okay. So 44. 37? Okay. 27. I, 27. Who says to the deep, be dry? Is that the one, right? 44, 27? Who says to the deep, be dry? Going on? Electric fan? I don't have electric fan. <laughs> anyway. Huh? What fun? No? Hello? Yes, go ahead, Sister Rose. Oh, Maybe okay. Yeah. Okay. Who says to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up your rivers? Who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built, and to the temple, your foundation shall be laid? Uh, everybody's hearing some strange sounds in there? How about here? No? Yes. It sounds like an electric fan. Yeah. yeah. Now it's now it's gone. <laughs> but anyway, so thank you, Sister Rose. So did you see that if how the Babylon will be thrown away? And then even the person who will throw over Babylon is already there. And can you go uh, did you read Sister Rose 45 verse 1? Okay, thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and lose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one is a prophecy about Babylon, how it will be thrown down by Cyrus. So this time we're going we're gonna to read the story of Babylon. So this is the highlight, the overview about Babylon, the fall of Babylon. The end of the fall of Babylon is you have been weighed in balance, right? Weighed in balance and found one thing. Daniel chapter 5 verse 27. Daniel chapter 5 described the fall of Babylon, which was the preview of the coming fall of universal Babylon in the end time. And we know that it's already coming. So we're going to read Daniel. Oh, one more verse. I want you to read, Sister Rose, if possible. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 38. Jeremiah chapter 50. Je Jeremiah 5, 0. Verse 38. What's the, Jeremiah, what's the cause? What's the reason why this Babylon will fall? Jeremiah 50, mm. verse... Jeremiah 50, verse, 30, verse 38. 3, 8. 3, 8. A drought is against her waters, and they will be dried up, for it is the land of carved images, and they are insane with their idols. Mm -hmm. So the cause of that fall, the issue from the first um, chapter of Daniel up to the last book, a uh, last chapter of Daniel is always worshipping the true God. So there yeah, will be a I, false worship, idolatry. Idolatry. Yes, always worship. But the issue about worship, there will be a false worship of false God. And there will be a false worship, force not to worship 
the true God. So we have to be uh, alert of that, of course, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says that neglect not prophesying. So we as a church, we need to come together, study prophecy, and link it to the event. Because if the prophecy of the Bible link it to the history of the great nations, and today we still have the great nations, but we cannot identify. So please remember, uh, Sister Rose read it in Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 38, and then you can go to chap uh, chapter 51, verses 13 and 36. It talks about the same thing. Babylon was on the waters of Euphrates River. That means it was built over. So that's the picture. That's the, and I, I researched this. He said that according to the study, this is exactly the the place or the position of Babylon. They have a lot of, um, if there will be drought or famine for how many years, they can still survive. They have all their supplies. That's how great Babylon was. But in this case, there is a problem. Okay, this is the outline. So, about the king, what he did, and then what he saw in the tribulation, and then he was asking for help, and then the help came, and the meaning, the interpretation, the experience of the handwritings on the wall. So are we ready? So let's go to um, Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. I'm sorry, Daniel chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. You know what happened, right? Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before a thousand Belshazzar while he tasted the wine. Please notice this because we're going to go it in the... We're going to go... What, what is this drinking wine has to do in the latter verses? So commanded to bring the golden and silver vessel which his father, King Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princess, his wives and his concubines might, might drink on it. Drink where? To the cup or to the vessel that his great-grandfather took from Jerusalem. So, verse 3, And they brought the golden vessel that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princess, his wives, his concubines, drank on them. They drank wine, and they praised, remember uh, Jer uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 38? They drank wine, they praised gods of gold, and silver, and brass, and iron, wood, and of stone. Now, something happened, right? In verse 6, the king's countenance was changed when he saw something. He thought uh, it troubled him so that the, the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one again each other. So the king cried aloud to bring in the astrology, astrologers, the Chaldeans, the same thing as King, ne king Nebuchadnezzar when they had problems, the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read these writings, show me the interpretation thereof, and you shall be clothed with scarlet and have chain of gold in his neck, and shall be the third ruler of the kingdom. So we went, we went there in, in verse 6. I put it in the other way. In verse, in verse 5, the same hour while, we, while they were doing this, Right? So this is four. And then the five. The same hour came forth a finger of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall and the king's palace. And king saw the part of hand that wrote. And then that was verse six. And now verse eight. And came all the king's wise men but they could not read the writings nor make known to the king the interpretation. Verse 9, the king was Belshazzar, uh, then was the king Belshazzar greatly troubled. Now there was a problem now. 
and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were stunned. Now, great wife, great woman, advise him. Maybe somebody can read verses 10 to 12. The advice of the queen. Anybody? The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your countenance change. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. And in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. So can you imagine the woman, right? The, the queen comforted him, don't worry. We have a guy that can, can translate it to you, can tell you what that is mean, what that, this writing means. So just relax. So that already happened. Praise the Lord for that. So I think he was comforted or whatever somehow. Then Daniel came, right? Sister Rose, can you read? I did not put the thing there anymore because we cannot see the picture. Verse okay, the 12. To 12? Seven. Yeah, 12, please. Inasmuch as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Now this is Daniel. He was called, right? And then Daniel came in verses 13 to 17. Sister Rose? Yeah, then... Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, who my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you, that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple, and have a chain of gold around your neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Oh. 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself, and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king, and make known to him the interpretation. Okay. In the case of the king, if Daniel will do something, you see the human nature, if you will do something, you're going to give me a favor, I will do something good for you. And Daniel said, there is not an issue anymore about the gift, about the necklace or whatever. Give it to whomever you want. That's beautiful. Uh, thank you, Sister Rose. Now, please, this is now Daniel and the king and all the people. Now, Daniel will tell the, the dream. Uh, it's not the dream. The handwriting is on the wall. And he will do the interpretation. But before that, Daniel, he will give the story of his great-grandfather. Actually, this happened um, 32 years after King Nebuchadnezzar declared the extol, lift up the God of heaven who has the control of everything and ruleth all over the world. Okay? That was the... Um, the writings of King Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 7 of, and verse 37 of chapter 4. At the end, after that, we don't see Nebuchadnezzar anymore. When King Nebuchadnezzar wrote this, he don't put his title anymore. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, no more King Nebuchadnezzar. He said, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king. Now this is the situation, the great grand uh, child, Belshazzar. After 32 years, he's the one who is ruling now of Babylon. That he made a party. You see already. You, you read it already. Now, uh, in verse 18, this is the story. Okay. 
maybe Sister Sister Mimi, are you all right around? Or we'll just continue with Sister Rose. Sister Rose, can you read it? Um, verses 18 to 21. 18 to 21. Okay, and the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. But when his up, and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. Oh my. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, no problem. Oh, I did not know that my iPad fell. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I? I was reading how many... I was reading, not even realizing that I'd been disconnected. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we heard you, but it's kind of far. Maybe that's... okay, yeah. because because okay. So Three. where am I now? Twenty. Twenty, yeah. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was swept with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of man and appoints over it whomever he chooses. Okay. Now, remember when before Daniel will give the meaning what, what was written in the, in the wall? He reviewed the story of his great grandfather, King Nebuchadnezzar, and that happened in chapter four. But this is thirty-two years Boy, later. Oh, now, look how uh, look how Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar about the problem. Can you see it in the screen? And you, his son, meaning actually grandson. Belshazzar has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. Meaning, everything that happened to King Nebuchadnezzar from his pre-conversion after his conversion, Belshazzar knows everything. And in this verse 22, it's very important because out of this verse, when Daniel said, Thou, his son, Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though you know all this. This is the verse that John the Revelator took in Revelation 14.8, the second angel's message. Revelation 16.19, Revelation 7, 3 to 6, and Revelation chapter 18, um, 2. To eight about Babylon. In other words, when you study the, the second angel's message about the fall of Babylon, the spiritual Babylon, it was taken to the fall of the literal Babylon. So this is what happened. This is the key verse for us to know and understand the fall of Babylon that is also applicable to us because we think that Babylon is just a religious group, but actually Babylon, the meaning of Babylon is Bab means gates and El means God. So Babylon meant trying to go to the gates of God by his own strength. And Babylon self also self-exaltation and self-preservation. And you know the rest of the story oh what happened, right? He said, what, what was the problem? How did um, Belshazzar and then he heart, he lifted up thyself. You lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven 
and they have brought what happened at the beginning of the chapter he brought the vessel to his house before thee and thou their lords their wives their concubines have drunk the wine in them so that's the situation because of pride he knows everything but yet he willfully and deliberately do these things thou hast praised the gods of silver it's repeated here gold brass iron wood stone which not which see not hear not nor know and the god in whose hand thy breath is and whose are all thy ways hast thou not glorified in other words you did not acknowledge him as god so then was the part of the hand sent from him the writings of the world and this is the writing of so daniel now before he gave the meaning he already he reviewed the story so to us to apply this message brothers and sisters is that we are not ignorant anymore of the message but if we still believe somehow something in our in ourselves that we can do something for the lord for our own salvation then it's very dangerous so now it's the meaning of the handwriting it's a mini mini tickle you for sin and this is the interpretation mini god hath numbered the kingdom and finished tickle thou art weight and the in the balance and thou art found wanting paris the kingdom is divided and giving to medis and persia this is the uh the situation in the king nebuchadnezzar he in chapter 4 he was taken out that's why the stem and the dream are the the tree that was cut off it it was not cut only the tree but the stem there in the what's not cut off it was preserved because it was the king that was taken out but in this case of king belshazzar not only him that will be taken out including the kingdom the kingdom will be divided and will be given to the British and Persia. And the cause of this fall is because of self-exaltation of doing things what is not right, especially worshipping God, the false God. Now there was no force here from the people of God, but he himself is the one who willfully and decide who willfully and deliberately decide to worship, to honor. The gods that cannot hear, the gods that cannot see. And then he was he commanded Belshazzar to be clothed, you know. So the end of the story is Belshazzar, the king of Chaldeans, he died. And of course, Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So now, this is the story that is very important that we need to know. I, I don't know if you studied this before, but this is, I will share to you, that the kings of the East overthrown Babylon. Cyrus, who came from the East, we can look at it in, we're going to check it from, from the Bible, Isaiah 41 verse 2 and verse 25. Anybody who's ready for your Bible, you can open it. So unmute. we... Unmute while reading. You can unmute while you read. If you want to read, you can unmute. Isaiah 41 verse 2 because the rest of the story of chapter 5 we know it already so we're gonna get it the spiritual meaning of that and the cause of that is that when we know we know all things about God and then we do the opposite that's the fall Isaiah 41 verse 2 Mother Epi. yeah mm -hmm. yes who stirred up one from the east whom victory meets at every step? Mm -hmm. He gives up nations before him so that he tramples kings underfoot. He makes them like dust with his sword, like driven stumble with stubble with his bow. So you see, it's uh, 150 before it happened, it was already prophesied in Isaiah. Because God knows the future. This is not God's program. This is there. He will set up for he will set forth king, kings. And kingdoms but yet they will not acknowledge him so that will happen exactly verse 25 sister toy verse 25 
verse 25. I stirred up one from the north, and he has come. From the rising of the sun, and he shall call upon my name. He shall trample on rulers as on mortar, as the potter treads clay. Remember, we studied that um, the other day about the, the potter and the clay. So now Jesus, yeah. or God, is giving us a preview. How about verse uh, 46, chapter 46, verse 11? 46, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Calling a bird of prey from the east, the men of my counsel from a far country. I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. I have purpose and I will do it. Oh my. Okay, so now the, the, the meaning of this passage. He said it's his purpose, but actually he knows how the people will react to his program, to his will, to his plan. So in the case of Cyrus, that conquered Babylon is a preview of Christ who will do the same thing to come from the east, right? Let's see Matthew chapter 24, verse 27. Because this is the picture of Christ. Cyrus is the picture of Christ that will conquer the universal spiritual Babylon that we are living now. 24, verse 27. It says here, for the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man. So Jesus is coming from the east. Did you see that? So the spiritual Euphrates River will be dried up. Christ will overthrow spiritual Babylon and liberate his people. This is the time that we are waiting. So when we are waiting for the Lord, we are all called Adventists. So Adventist is not just a denomination but people who believe in God, who is our creator, and who is our savior, and the coming king. The word Advent. So waiting for the coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So Christ will overthrow spiritual Babylon and will give freedom. Now the full, final, total salvation. Not from guilt and punishment, but from the power, I'm sorry, from the presence and nature of sin. Can we read Revelation chapter 17, verses 12 to 7? Because what we are, para, we are giving parallel about Christ, uh, Cyrus overthrowing Babylon. This is the main thrust of our study in Daniel chapter 5. Revelation chapter 17. What verse, Brother Epi? Verses 12 to 17. 17 verses 12 to 17? Yes. Okay, I'll read. Father, as we read your word, give us a clear understanding, we pray. And the ten horns which thou sawest, sawest are ten kings, mm -hmm. which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings are our with the beasts. Am I reading it right? Yes, but right, receive yeah. power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For mm -hmm. he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Mm -hmm. And he, he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the, where the war sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Mm -hmm. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the war and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God had put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdoms unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So did you see? So Revelation chapter 17, verses 12 
12 to 17, enlarges upon the drying up the spiritual Babylon's support, the kings. Right? So in Revelation 16, verse 12, the sixth plague, let's see, let's check it out. 16, verse 12, this is the sixth plague. Revelation 16, verse uh, 12, can you read it, Sister Drew? Yeah, Revelation 16, verse 12 says, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, mm. and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay, so the, the waters of Babylon, of Euphrates, will dry up. What is the purpose? So the kings of the east might be prepared. So you know the story how Babylon was conquered. They they divert um, Darius, divert the, the water in the Euphrates River until it dried up. That's the, that's the way they get inside Babylon. So the sixth plague, the sixth plague says, drying up prepares the way of the kings of the east. Cyrus also led other kings when he overthrew Babylon. So many kings shall be raised up from this coast of the earth. The kings of the Medes, Persia, against the her here is Babylon. Right? Babylon, the nation with the kings of Medes, Persia. Let's read again Jeremiah. We have, we have a lot of Bibles that we're gonna, you're gonna read and we're gonna compare later. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 41. Because we know the story, we need to go to the application. What is this has to do with our time now and the coming end of this world? Jeremiah, Jeremiah 50, yeah. verse 41. Mm -hmm. Behold, a people shall come from the north and a great nation and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. So that's exactly what... Um, this prophecy is talking about, right? So how about uh, chapter 51, verses 11 and 28? 51, 11 and 20, 11 and? 28. Okay, 11 and 28. 11. Okay, make, br make bright the arrows, make bright the arrows, arrows gather the shields the lord had raised up the spirit of the kings of the the, the medes for mm. his device is against babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the lord the vengeance of his temple mm. um 220 and just 28 yeah okay 28 27 Sorry, I, okay, 28. Prepare against her the nation with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. Did you see how people were involved in the case of Belshazzar? And the party that they were doing, how many people he invited? How many people were damaged during the destruction, during the fall of Babylon? It's the same thing. It was already prophesied. So Cyrus was prophesied by God about 150 years before it will happen. And the application, the spiritual application of this Daniel chapter 5 is from now and the end time. About how Jesus will conquer the universal spiritual Babylon. So that's, that's the time that, that's the time that we are waiting when Jesus come and fulfill. So this is the kind of comparison that we're going to do. Right? Can you see it in the screen? Right? Can you see it? Okay. So now the, the literal Babylon is on the left side and the spiritual Babylon on the right side. How this literal Babylon fall down? Remember the three angels' message? I just clarify this, that the three angels, three messengers, has only one message. 
And the message is the everlasting gospel. However, the first angel is in the context of God's judgment in favor of his saints. When you accept the gospel, you will live with Christ forever. When you reject the gospel in the uh, revelation, um, the third angel's message, you will say goodbye to life forever. So when, when you will see in Revelation chapter uh, 14, the, the study is getting hot, you know. So Revelation chapter 14, verse 8, I will read it for your hearing. And there followed another angel, meaning the angel just followed to the first angel. There are three angels in Revelation 14, but they have only one message, the everlasting gospel. So the first angel is in the context of the ever um, judgment. And the second angel is in the context of the Babylon that is fallen. Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city. So that Babylon is described as great city in the literal or actual or local story. It was the great city. So the same as the spiritual Babylon is also the great city. Can you check Revelation chapter 17 verse 18? We read it earlier, but we will read it again. And the woman which thou sowest is that great city. Wow. Which reigneth over the kings of the earth. This is global. When, Babel, when King Nebuchadnezzar put up his statue of gold, that's global worship all over the world. Actually, only at the time because they, they cannot hear everybody. But at the time, they were the world superpower. Anybody that is under Babylon, they have to fall down and worship. The issue is always worship. Who will lead and who will be worshipped? King Nebuchadnezzar thought he is the leader. He has to be worshipped. But there is God who introduced himself to King Nebuchadnezzar. That there is, he is the one who controls everything and put rulers and have his own will. But King Nebuchadnezzar decided at the beginning before his full conversion of having seven years. So he did his thing. So Babylon is the great city and spiritual Babylon is also a great city. Babylon sat on the waters of Euphrates River. The, the spiritual Babylon sits upon many waters. What does many water mean? And when we read Revelation chapter 7, 17 verse 1, I will people, read it for you. People, people nations, right? Um, meaning, people, nations, yeah. That's right. Meaning, it's um, occupied people, right? So the Babylon, the city of Babylon, the spiritual Babylon, is sitting upon many waters. And many waters means the nations, people, multitudes, and tongues. Wow, now it's getting clear, right? Man. So the waters were literal and local in the, the place of Babylon. Now, in the spiritual Babylon, waters are symbolic of nations. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verses, um, no, chapter 7, verse, I think we read that earlier, 7, sorry, I put the uh, number 4 in there. Uh, okay, I will read for you. Sister Toy, are you open? Can you read verse 15 of chapter 17? If not, I will read for your hearing. Revelation I, one. Yeah, 17 verse 15. Revelation 17. 15. Okay, hold on. Okay. Revelation 17, 15. Mm. And the angel said to me, the waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated, wow, mm -hmm. are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. Okay, who is sitting in there in that waters? The prostitute, the great woman. Yeah, the great woman, yeah. 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 So when we study Revelation, we will see who is this woman. We will not talk about the woman this time. What we are, <laughs> what we are, <laughs> no, it's a lot, so we cannot, we cannot do that now. What we are describing now is what is this water that symbolizes about the literal water 
and the symbolic water. So it's the nations, okay? Now, anyway, just an announcement. Today is a national day of prayer. So we are joining them. Some of you will watch the TV. I don't know, but we will, we will pray just, just after their, this. We will pray and some of you can watch. But anytime you can pray in your hearts. But if you want to join somewhere, a lot of programs this time, you can join, right? So yeah. we'll just uh, do this and then we will pray later um, like what we did yesterday so that we will not be interrupted. The water sustained local Babylon. Even how many years? They will not dry up because they are supplied by the Euphrates River. So the water's nations sustain global Babylon. Who sustained the global Babylon? The people. Everywhere in the world, traveling everywhere. Tourists here, tourists there. You know? So that's the people sustaining the spiritual Babylon. Number five, literal river of Euphrates which sustained Babylon was dried up. Maybe we can check that up. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 1 and 38. I think we read that earlier with Sister Rose. But let, let, me, let us read verse 1. And the word of the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. So this chapter is addressed to the Babylon. And then in verse 38, a drought is upon her waters. Who is the her here? Babylon, upon her waters. A drought is upon her waters and shall be dried up. Why? For it is the land of grieven image. Wow. And they are mad upon their gods. Can you imagine? So the spiritual Euphrates River is sustained. Sustains Babylon will be dried up too. Excuse me. Yes. Is Babylon Iraq now? The literal Babylon was in Iraq originally. Iraq yeah, but the, the spiritual Babylon is no more Iraq. You're going to study that. <laughs> okay. So the original is Iraq and Iran. That was the Medo Persia originally. Oh, Medo Persia. Yeah. Now, this is the, the exciting from 6 to 11 because now it will go to who is this one that will conquer? Cyrus, who, you know who conquered um, Daniel? Let's go back to Daniel. It's already there, but let's just go. Daniel chapter 5, verse 31. Daniel chapter 5, verse 31. Remember Cyrus and Darius? They were the kings of Medo Persia. So Darius, the Median, took the kingdom being about three score and two years, so 62 years. So Darius and Cyrus, but it was Cyrus who was prophesied by God, of course, together with the kings, as what I mentioned earlier. So Cyrus conquered the literal Babylon. And Christ will conquer the spiritual Babylon. So for us to know who is this spiritual enemy of Christ, we should be acquainted with our king, Jesus Christ. This is a battle of this is a spiritual battle. So if we are not acquainted with our spiritual mind as the spirit leads us, it's hard for us to detect our king, our commander. So if we don't know our commander, how can we know our enemy? If we will not know our enemy, we, we, we don't know that we are already part of the enemy of Christ. So it's very important for us to study the word of God, to subdue our minds with the truth of the word of God. Very important. So Cyrus liberated God's people. Remember, Cyrus told the, the Israelites to go back to, to, Babel, to Jerusalem. So it's the same as Christ. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So Cyrus is the king that liberates his people. 
and Jesus is the king of kings that will liberate his people. Cyrus was a king of kings. He led the kings. You can, you can check that out in his um, history. You know what the, the meaning of Cyrus? Oh, we, we have it here, but we will go to, to that later. So King Cyrus is the one that lead the kings, including Darius. So Christ is the good shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. So Christ is the Lord's anointed. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Maybe we can go there. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, to, to just check it. And how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. So Jesus Christ was anointed. He is the good shepherd. He is the one who will lead his people out of sin and death. So number nine, Cyrus was the Lord's shepherd. So we have a memory verse, the Lord is my shepherd. But we're going to check it up. Isaiah 44 verse 28. If you are ready with your Bible, you just unmute. Isaiah 44 verse 28. Who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he mm -hmm. shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built, and to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. So who is his shepherd, according to this verse? Cyrus. Right? Cyrus was the Lord's shepherd in this verse. And Jesus Christ, is the son of righteousness. Malachi chapter 2 verse 2. Just 4 verse 2. We're just, com we're just comparing this about the spiritual and the, the fulfillment. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. It says, But unto you that fear my name shall be the son of righteousness arise and healing in his wings. So how is Jesus called? The son of righteousness. So in this, Cyrus is also anointed. In 45 verse 1. We are comparing these uh, verses. Isaiah 45 verse 1. I hope you don't get dizzy on this. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus. So Cyrus was anointed. I think I put the other... It's, uh, I interchanged the number. But anyway, so Cyrus is also anointed by the Lord. Last two ones. Cyrus name, uh, Cyrus came from the east. Chapter 41, verses 2 and 25. If you are unmute, you can read it so that we have an interaction. Chapter 41, verse 2 and 25. Chapter um, chapter 41, verse 2. And 25. You can check it in. Yeah. Okay. Verse 2. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, call him to his foot, give the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as the dust to his sword, and and as driven stubble to his bow. He's from what? From where? 41 yes. verse 2. Yeah, he's from where? From, from the, the east. east. From okay. the east. Very good. Okay, about 25. Okay, verse 25. Uh, the way my Bible is numbered is <coughs> numbers. Excuse me. Um, sorry, somebody find it before me. Go ahead because it's hard to see the numbers in my Bible. I will read it for your hearing. I rise up one from the north and shall come from the rising of sun. So what does it mean, rising of sun? That is from the east. And shall he call upon the na my name and shall come upon princes and upon mortars upon the potter treadeth clay okay 
So now, Jesus Christ will come, the second coming. Matthew 24, verse 7. Okay, Rose? Okay, Matthew 24, 24 7. 7. 24, 7. 27. 24, oh no, what's that? 24, Matthew. verse 7. Yeah, it's in the okay. screen. For the nation will rise against nation and mm -hmm. kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places 24 verse 27 oh number 27. 10. yeah well, for as the lightning comes the lightning from the east out. and flashes to the west so also will the coming of the son of man be so, okay, in the song, lift up your head for redemption, draweth nigh. Draweth nigh. Yeah. Where is Jesus coming from? From the east, right? Lift up the your eastern head. sky. The eastern sky, lift up your head. That's the song. But actually, it's just a song. But actually, it's taken from this verse. Now, the last one. Cyrus led kings from the east. Jeremiah 25, 12 to 14. Jeremiah 25, 12 to 14. 25, 12 to 14. Then it came to pass when 70 years are completed that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans for their iniquity, says the Lord, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. So I will bring on that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied concerning all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall be served by them also, and I will repay them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. About the king of Babylon. So, can you imagine um, King Nebuchadnezzar, King, King Nebuchadnezzar's uh, fall is when he declared himself, he did not listen to the instruction of Daniel after one year, he became one of the beasts of the field. But then after seven years, the thing, the right mind came back to him and then he extolled the Lord. So that's what Daniel is telling Belsh King Belshazzar. But King Belshazzar willfully and deliberately decided. So as the prophecy has been mentioned and prophesied that this will happen, so the king of ba the Babylon will be thrown out. But it's not under the leadership of King Nebuchadnezzar anymore, but under the leadership of Belshazzar. So the last one. Christ will lead kings of the East, Revelation 16, 12. Sister Rose? Can somebody read it? Okay, I will read I, it. Yeah. Okay, I will read it. Oh, uh, anybody there? Sister Doris? Yes. Yeah, please. Revelation 16, 12. Uh, Revelation 16, 12. Mm. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river of Prudis, and it was, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Mm -hmm. The king of the east may be prepared. So who will prepare? Who will prepare these kings from the east? Of course, God Himself in verse seven, uh -huh. right? right? So yes. this is the comparison of the literal Babylon and the spiritual Babylon. So we are waiting, brothers and sisters, if we still have this self-confidence till now, we have, surrender, we have to surrender it to the cross that we will experience either King Nebuchadnezzar for seven years and then we come back. Or we're going to fall down and forever will be destroyed according to Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 14 that this will be a perpetual destruction. No more to come back. No more to resurrect again this power. So what the whole 
picture of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream in chapter 2 is that all these kingdoms of the earth will come to an end. And now we are already living in the toes of the, the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar where, where the, the iron and clay is um, putting together, but they will not cleave to each other. So this time that we are living now, people are more on social uh, life that we can live according to what we are even in our, in our sermon, in our message, in our approach to people. We will say, oh, if they don't like that, never mind. That's their, that's their, um, what they call this? Opinion. That's their opinion. That is their, their uh, preference. That's their choices. So it's hard for us to encourage people sometimes, even the chairs or our friends, because we are more uh, influence of uh, social, um, social something i forgot the the terminology but that's how we live in this world today so we can do whatever we want we have to take care of our own business but remember the message of the gospel we are one body and one suffer everybody suffer so now this covid some of our families are being victim of that we do? pray for one another because the spirit of the lord is with us that's what we do. We pray for one another. We pray, even if, the, if it's not a relative, whoever, we are joining one to get together. But because of the Babylonian spirit that is in this world that is controlling, all of us are doing the same thing, but the difference is the motive. Do you see? The difference is the motive. Why we come to the Lord? Because we want to save our lives. And the other group, why we come to the Lord? Because we appreciate of what He has done for us and we claim His promise that He will raise up a people that will stand in spite of what, was, what will happen in the great tribulation. Before, that's why Jesus come, Jesus will return to deliver His people from the hands of the enemy, meaning the great tribulation is about to come. But that great tribulation will not come until the people of God will be sealed. And the sealing, um, I, I will say this to clarify this because so much confusion of this. The Holy Spirit is not the seal. The Holy Spirit is the one that will seal it in our minds, meaning we decide willfully for Jesus Christ. Whatever will happen, we will remain faithful and we will vindicate the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We study that in the judgment. We study that in the 144,000. So this is the situation. Christ represents Cyrus who destroyed the literal Babylon and Christ will destroy the spiritual Babylon. But before that will happen, this spiritual Babylon will make a great feast to deceive all people, nation, kindred, tongue, and language that we are worshiping the true God. It will appear to worship the true God because everything is very good. There's no more killing, no more dying. Everything is just worshiping God. But with the wrong doctrine. They are using the cup of God. It was taken from, from Jerusalem. But they will put a wine. The wine represents when you drink wine, when you drink alcohol, when you drink all those, you become confused. In the Philippines, Sister Doris, I will not talk about other people, but I talk to myself. And my experience and what I observe, when people get drunk in the Philippines, they know how to speak English. <laughs> you know, even if they don't study, they don't go to school, but as soon as they get drunk, they know how to speak English. It will sound funny, but it will sound like me. It's funny, but they can speak English. So that's what the, the spiritual Babylon will do. He will use the church, the things, the property of God, the church, and will insert more of false teachings, false doctrines that are not biblical, but it will appear to the people that is very good. And then people will be confused. They thought they're going to worship the true God, but they are worshiping the beast. So, 
when we study about the seal of God, it's very important. All these things that we are doing, that's why we are studying slowly in the book of Daniel. And tomorrow we're going to study about chapter 6, what is the issue of chapter 6. And then after that, we will be ready to identify all these kingdoms, the, the lion with eagle wings and the bear with three ribs and the leopard that has four we, we talk about it already, but we will go in details about the little horn that became prominent and spoke against the Most High. Remember, Sister Toy? We studied that before about uh, three nights or four nights ago. So that's what we're going to do. So just to summarize this and then we will pray. Or if you have some comment, this is the lesson that at least I learned. You know? So the attempt to drink wine in the sacred vessel from God's temple is a type of end time events. They will get, they will use the church. That's why there will be two churches. You will see two women in Revelation. The women in chapter 7 that sit upon the waters and there's a woman that sit. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter seven, 17 verse 1. Two women. Revelation chapter 17. Where, where is the, the woman sitting? Revelation chapter 12, I think. Okay, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there, there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet upon the head upon her head a crown of 12 stars and she being with a child cried tra travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven behold a great red dragon now this is the, now the attack so one woman that was clothed with the sun under her feet is the moon and upon her head is crown of 12 stars. In chapter 17, verse 18, a woman which saw it, a woman that is sitting on the city, on the waters. Right? So, in a short time, brothers and sisters, this woman, both women will appear. The women that represents God's church and the women that will represent the religious organization that will appear to be godly but it's the deception of the devil that will enforce to worship the beast so two things the world the government will enforce to worship the false god by appearing by its appearance that it will worship the right god number two it will force or enforce the world not to worship the true God. And when these things will happen, then persecution will come. Persecution because there will be people who will learn not to love themselves anymore, but will become loyal to God. You see? So we cannot dramatize our faith. We have to be faithful to God from the heart. Not when people are looking at us, not when we are in the church. But the holiness that God is expecting us is holiness that comes from the Holy Spirit by spending time with the Word. Right? So number two, drying up of the river Euphrates before the fall of ancient Babylon and deliverance of Israel is a preview of the end time events. Revelation uses all the symbolisms to describe the withdrawal of the support for the end time Babylon just before Jesus will come with his heavenly armies. Amen? And the last one that I see in here, with nations, when people exalt itself against God's will, its days are numbered. Today, the handwriting is on the wall for the world. The world today is confused and it needs some people to explain. And you know how we'll explain this? <laughs> the saints of the Most High. Okay. 
So any comments before we, we will pray together once again with our prayer request. And then we end up earlier today because I have to prepare the study for, for the 11. And tomorrow is Friday. We don't have meeting. But on Saturday night, we will have our meeting on the 16th. I will announce before we pray, unless you have some comments. On the 16th, we're going to have a, a meeting by Pastor... No. Yeah. The one with the mustache from Andrews. Who is that? No, the other guy. Dwight Nelson. Dwight Nelson. Yeah. Yes. So anyway... So this time, uh, you have some comments or questions before we, we pray? Or we will pray first? I think it's, it's good for us to pray first before we go to uh, sharing our, our blessing that we, that we receive. Okay, so any new requests? Let's, let's thank the Lord. Brother Jerome is feeling better now. I don't know. I texted Brother Jerry. Did not reply yet, but I hope they are feeling well. Let's pray for the Magno family that is a brother.